Herzlich willkommen zu Nerdplay, dem Cosplay-Podcast von Nerdizismus. Ich bin heute mal wieder nicht alleine, denn ich habe die wunderbare Javanna bei mir. Hi Javanna! Hallo Lea, hallo Zuhörer! Und Javanna wird heute nämlich unsere Serie, unsere Folge übernehmen, denn wir haben nämlich ein Gespräch auf Englisch. Wir werden also gleich switchen. Ähm, wie immer könnt ihr den Podcast auf unserer Homepage Spotify und iTunes finden und überall, wo es Podcasts gibt. Aber ich würde sagen, wir kommen jetzt nämlich auch zu unserem Gast, nämlich Alyssa King. Hi Alyssa, it's so nice to hear you. Hi. <lacht> <lacht> Sorry for the weird introduction, German. <lacht> no worries. We met, we met Alyssa, also known as Jokers Harley, last year on Comic-Con Germany in Stuttgart. And we uh, already wanted to talk to her then, but she didn't have time because she had a really busy schedule. So we seized the opportunity uh, to have her on one of our online interviews. So we're really glad that we get to talk to you now. How are you doing? I mean, I'm doing the best I can over here. <laughs> It's kind of crazy in New York. Yeah, it's uh, quite a different situation than here in Germany where we have, uh, I think the worst part is behind us, even though there might be mm -hmm. a second wave coming right now. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully. Yeah. Well, I would like to ask you, our first question for every guest uh, is how uh, high is your nerd factor on a scale from one to ten? Oh, geez. Uh, <laughs> probably an eight. Like, I love a lot of things and I get into a lot of things. But there's some people out there who are really, really hardcore fans of stuff. And I I don't have the energy for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can relate to that. <laughs> so we know you as Jokers Harley. And uh, I bet that's also the cosplay that really made you famous is that um, mm -hmm. your favorite cosplay as well or is it just the first or the best or the most uh, liked or how would you rate your relationship with your Harley Quinn oh it's well it definitely was the first costume uh, I've made um, it is my favorite to wear um, sometimes it can get a little old because there's a lot of Harleys around and people expect me to be Harley. So when they don't see me in it, they get a little sad and that makes me sad. <laughs> But, um, sh I can get away with a lot of stuff wearing Harley, like going behind celebrity booths and, and just doing weird, crazy things. People kind of let it happen because of the costume I'm in. It's a liberating costume. <laughs> Oh, it's very liberating. I it, it, I have no boundaries. <laughs> Yavanna and I always talk about the Harley effect. Like, everyone who's in a Harley cosplay ridiculously gets crazy. <laughs> <laughs> You're yeah. doing the classic Harley, the real Harley Queen cosplay. And I also have seen you in Nurse Harley. Um, are you doing modern setting Harley or Suicide Squad Harley or anything like that as well? No, I'm not really into Suicide Squad. I I watched it. I've seen it. Um, I haven't seen the second one yet. But I was. I'm not into the vibe. I'm not into that kind of a look. Um, I'm. It's not where my comfort zone is. But I've done a bunch of different Harleys. Yeah, classic nurse. I have a um, a jungle Harley based off of a uh, piece of art that I love, uh, where it's kind of like she's like savage and she has like a spear. It's kind of cool. I have a mime Harley. I have Dr. Harley Quinzel. I have a Star Trek Harley. Um, I like to keep it classic, but do different outfits. Yeah, so. I've seen that you have just uh, a few weeks ago gotten a new wig for new Harley looks in blonde. Yes. And also maybe Elsa. So weird. Like, I like Elsa, but I'm not really into Frozen. It's just this weird thing. Like, I really like the character, but I'm not into that franchise. Um, but yeah, the, the new wig is fantastic because the wig that I've been using for Dr. Harleen Quinzel or when she's just in the suit with her hair out is just a blonde bob, 
with bangs. And it was kind of my take on her, but it's not true to the character design. So I got a blonde wig where I can do like full blown pigtails. Oh, yeah. Pigtails with wigs are really um, a class of their own, I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> yes so do you have a favorite genre mm. yeah you were talking about frozen not being your jam and um liking it classic and suicide squad not being your aesthetic so i was just wondering if you have something that you'd say is that's really up your alley oh well um i like anything dark and gritty um kind of <laughs> i can feel that <laughs> like i'm really into uh let's say, like, crime thrillers or dramatic pieces where it's, like, you know, period films. Um, I don't know. It's just there's so tactile, and I love watching for the costumes and everything and the surroundings. And I just felt like the newer kind of stuff is a little too sleek, a little too clean. It's a little too put together where it looks like a costume versus a uniform a superhero or villain would wear to do whatever they're doing. It's it just kind of has like a weird disconnect. Um, like I just watched John Wick the other day and that was just so, <laughs> my mind was blown. Yeah. I was like, what? Where has this, I can't believe I had never seen it before. <laughs> And it was so amazing compared to the recent superhero movies we watched. Because we finally sat down during quarantine mm. and watched all the Marvel movies. Yeah, they're really sleek. And I think all of those, they're, they're just, they're, they were way too much. And then I watched that. I'm like, this is it. This is what it needs to be. So, like, I did really like <laughs> the Joker movie because of it. Yeah. Well, I can personally recommend birds of prey because i find the costumes more looking like they picked them out themselves and not a costume department but also mm -hmm. uh i just i just have to say this because i am obsessed with the old guard at the moment it's a netflix movie with Charlize theron it's amazing <laughs> it's i need so to good. watch that <laughs> i'm really hoping they make the trilogy i love her so much about. Uh, anyways, back to you yeah. and your cosplay. <laughs> I'm really sorry. I just <laughs> had to tell it someone. I really enjoy uh, no, your point of view. Um, and wh while we were talking about Harley Quinn and your love for other cosplays as well, is Harley Quinn the most demanded cosplay when you get invited somewhere? Um, Yes. Or can you just wear whatever you want? <laughs> no, I can't wear whatever I want because, <laughs> like, uh, people love Harley. They want to see <laughs> Harley. Um, even though like, I have yeah. a few other costumes, um, it's just, it's weird when people don't know my face, but they know my face with a cowl and makeup on. <laughs> yeah. And so if I wear anything, <laughs> if I wear so anything weird. that shows just my face as, as it is, people are kind of like, Oh, you're that person. Oh, you do Harley. And I'm like, yes. So it's it's <laughs> it's so weird having people only recognize me when I only have a bunch of stuff on my head. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so like, like I wore I wore um Kiki from Kiki's delivery service and we were so proud of it because the broom we uh we handmade the oh. broom. Oh wow. Um and it's it's like six or seven feet tall and no it, it didn't no one was like excited to see it. Oh, that's sad. I was like, fine. <laughs> fine. I'll just wear this around my house. <laughs> I really do love your Morticia, though. And maybe, maybe, maybe your Joker makes a good oh, yeah. Gomez as well. Well, <laughs> I always joked with him because of our height differences. I always thought it'd be funny if I was Gomez and he was Morticia. But that this... Yeah. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't a suggestion he was keen on. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad. His loss. <laughs> you do look amazing as Morticia, though. I wouldn't Thank have want to lost that. Oh, yeah. It suits you so well. Thank you. But speaking of him, you are, uh, you're doing the partner cosplay quite a lot. Is that something really dear to your heart? Is that just something that came up? Or did you guys plan it that way? Well, when we had first met... Um, he had already had the costume 
And I had went with him to San Diego Comic-Con, and it blew up there. Oh, wow. <laughs> and after that, he kind of asked for me to be, you know, like, oh, why don't we make you a Harley costume? And I was really nervous because I was very self-conscious about my body and, you know, wearing a spandex suit. I've never done that before. Um, and so he worked on it. And we only have that co cosplays as a couple, Joker and Harley. And we did that for a few years before he retired the costume, except for when we were in Germany last year, when it was kind of like a, the big comeback for that one-time convention. Um, well, we were glad that you were there, and we got to meet you. Yes. Yes. It was, it was oh, yeah. exciting. It was, it was very fun seeing him back in the costume. But, um, yeah, it was kind of just like a mutual thing that we did, and we haven't really done it since, um, because he's, you know, moved on in his own career and stuff like that. But I've continued doing it. But he helps a lot with, uh, if I need help with a costume, seeing if one thing works or if I should add something. He's, he's very much in the process of helping me do costumes and the photography of it all, but he doesn't have anything new for himself. Talking of moving on, I have seen that you have rearranged your Instagram. Was that something you were planning on doing a long time or was that just a new year, new me kind of decision? I had thought about doing it for a while, and I used the whole New Year 2020 thing to, as an excuse to do it, um, because I have everything, <laughs> I have everything on my Facebook page that has kind of, it's not dead, but no one really pays attention to it because it's Facebook. Um, yeah, because Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> so I just, I decided, you know what, I'm just going to delete everything off of my Instagram and redo everything because it kind of started to seem a little scattered, a little confused. I had posts that were from years ago that had nothing to do for, with cosplay. And I just wanted to make it everything streamlined versus having a cosplay page, an art page, a photography page. It started to get way too muddled. So I decided to just make it one page and this is each you. row. Yeah. So like, you know, one box is for cosplay and photography that I do of just modeling. Second one is just me with selfies or whatever I'm doing. And then the third one is art. So I have I have a set schedule for how I post everything just to make it a lot easier on me instead of just figuring out like, oh, I don't know what to post. I have nothing to do where I have like, no, I know what to post. And it's, it's so much easier. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's a perfect decision because I just love how everything is arranged. And I love to see your art. I love to see a cosplay. And it's so much <laughs> like the whole package is Elisa. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, I've also seen that you're doing a lot more on uh, Patreon lately, especially with the, um, yeah, let's call it a charity drive, I guess, for your friend and the pictures yeah. that you sold. Um, yeah. It's really, it's really nice and honest and open from your side, I think, to see you as a person and see your personality shine through that. Well, thank you. Yeah, I, I, I like helping people. And, um, you know, I'm everyone's in a tough spot right now. I'm in a tough spot right now. But I, I'm lucky and I have ways to make an income, even though it might be small. I can make an income from my house where, yeah, my friend, she can't. She's mostly in her bed. She's sick all the time and she can't go to work because of the virus. Um, it's, she's too high risk. Uh, so yeah, I think we just got to help each other out as much as possible, especially since, you know, our government doesn't. <laughs> Unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I really hope by the time that we are streaming this, your situation gets better and that of your friend does as well. Um, yeah. but for now I just wish you the best in that department because health is the greatest gift we can have and mm -hmm. i say that as as an immunocompromised person myself so yeah we both leah yeah. and i we both stayed inside even before it was mandated over here so and we're still mm -hmm. doing it <laughs> <laughs> even so everything's lifted yeah yeah and because mental health is also like a big struggle for both of us and this is why we were like oh no 
we are just saying yeah i i took i took work (laughs) off i'm like i can't i can't keep getting on the train and going to a job where people keep taking their masks off yeah i was uh, also really happy to read that on your page to be honest because it feels good to not be alone in that opinion And it's nice of you to share your views with us. Because as Leah said, we both have mental health struggles as well. Um, Mm -hmm. I I have depression. Um, I am isolating a lot these days. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So um, I'm really uncomfortable going to the doctor's appointments and stuff like that. And I'm also not working right now because I just feel like it's really important. Yeah, just don't ask me. I have OCD, so <laughs> I'm really <laughs> fucked. <laughs> so how does it feel for you to share your views on that online to like a bunch of strangers, basically? Is that something liberating or just normal? I mean, sometimes it's a little weird because like I see all my friends being really honest online. and It's kind of like they post everything and anything. And I don't post, I mean, I post a lot, but I, it's mostly cat photos. Um, I don't post a lot of personal stuff, but things that I feel like don't just affect me or could help someone else make a decision. Um, I try to put out there, like, I'm not going to work uh, because it's not, it's for me, it's not safe. I don't think it's safe and I need to say it. I need to tell people that don't you don't have to go do something if you are uncomfortable doing it and yeah it's going to be hard um not having the regular income but i had to look at it as the hours i would be given at work i did the, i did the math i would be getting a maximum of 15 hours at work and with my wage i would get a paycheck for only $84 a week and that's with all the taxes and everything taken out and I cannot live on $84 a week so I had to make a decision of do I put my health at risk for less than $100 or do I stay home and work on my art and sell art pieces and um, do some more stuff on Patreon and get income that way and it has been more beneficial for me um and I feel like a lot of people didn't know how to handle going to work. And it, it helped a few people to understand, like, oh, I guess I don't have to do it. Yes, I think so, too, because um, some people don't see the that it is a real opportunity that you can take. It's one of the options mm-hmm. that you can choose because, let's face it, uh, most of the times financial uh fears are really big and really existential so uh, i think it's really great to see that you're doing the best you can with your situation and with your talent because i'm really glad that you're drawing more and we see more of that (laughs) online so (laughs) me too (laughs) it's also helping some other people i think (laughs) yeah when i saw that uh um first picture uh, i don't know when it was but you were like i took out my watercolors and i'm like oh so did i a couple of weeks ago how nice (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah i I love watercoloring but it's not something i have i haven't honed that skill yet so it's kind it took forever to paint (laughs) i think it was elsa that i was painting i was like ah (laughs) i hope i don't mess this up (laughs) Oh, well, watercolor is nice because you <laughs> basically can't mess up. You just call it intentional, and then that's that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> or you paint over it with a black marker. There you go. <laughs> so did you discover any other hidden talents or maybe just some nice things that you didn't know that you liked before in this time off? I mean, I learned that I'm not a good bread maker. So. <laughs> oh, the bread making trend, <laughs> yes. Been through I, that I, as well. I just I was like, I should try. Yeah. Really, cause, so I, um, I kind of have anxiety, and I was having some bad panic attacks, and I like to watch calm things when that's going on. So I rewatched uh, British mm-hmm. Bake Off for like the millionth time, 
And I was like, you know what? I I gotta oh, do yeah. this. I gotta make bread. So mm-hmm. I tried it, failed. I failed <laughs> five times, and I finally found a recipe that is idiot proof. It was I didn't have to knead it. I I just <laughs> threw it all in a bowl, mixed it with some water. And then let it prove, and then you throw it in the oven. There's there's nothing to it. And I finally made a loaf of bread. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. I've just been drawing and watching TV. I haven't really done a lot of new things. Um, I haven't either. I just yeah. sorted all my art stuff and used some things I haven't used in a few years, but... Other than that, nothing new. Yeah. And I cleaned my whole apartment. We we did that. We sh- got to do it again, though. We have... <laughs> we slacked on Quarantine that. is too long. I have to clean again. <laughs> so, do you miss the whole cosplaying and cosplay scene, like the conventions and stuff? Or are you glad for a little pause? I mean, I never went to a lot of conventions a year. It was kind of like three, four a year. Um, so I was never completely overwhelmed with it. But it is it is nice to have just a break from the conventions, from work. Um, so I kind of just try to relax as much as possible. But I do miss my friends. <laughs> I, like, I, love, I love Tony, but he's the only person I've really seen. Um, and so far we're, we're, so far we're fine. We're not going to kill each other or anything, but it, it'd be nice to no Holly and Joker. Uh, no, <laughs> but it, 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 it just sucks. Cause like in May we were supposed to go to a convention in Italy and I, it's one way where we don't dress up. We kind of just, we're invited to go, um, because our friend runs it. And we then just give them our services and help out artists if they need it, um, figure drawing models. Like, we just go there to help. And we see most of our friends there. And it was weird not going because it's like, I usually see this group of people once a year, twice a year. And it, I haven't. It's, it's kind of sad. I miss, I miss my friends. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I miss the most about the conventions as well. We have some convention friends that you only see at conventions, basically, Mm -hmm. because otherwise they live too far apart. Even though probably for someone from America, our distances don't (laughs) seem as uh, long. But (laughs) I'm still not going to drive five hours to my friend in uh, Bayern. (laughs) So is there anything... Uh, like already planned for you for next year or anything where you know this is definitely going to be one thing I'm doing or are you still rather I mean I'm still super cautious the um the convention in Italy was rescheduled until next May so I'm kind of hoping things are better I mean who knows if we're going to be allowed to fly out of our country Mm -hmm. you know we're banned from everyone (laughs) Um, but that, so far, that's the only thing I have planned. Um, we'll just have to see how it goes. And I'm a very, oh, I can't, like, I'm not a hypochondriac, but I get freaked out very easily. And so, like, when I, once I come home, I have to wash everything. I have to wash my Mm -hmm. hair. I have to wash. And so I just, I don't know how I feel because a lot of the costumes I have, like Harley, I don't wash her in no, I can't I cannot bleach it and I can't go to a regular laundromat because I don't have a laundry in my house and wash her it's too scary I usually go to a friend's house and I use their machines but again that's me going to someone else's house and I just I just don't trust a lot of people even though I mm. love them and they're my friends I the fear gets the better of me yes we definitely definitely feel with you on that some of our closest friends usually were like, sorry, I still can't meet you. You're meeting too many people. I just can't. Yeah. Still speaking about uh, cosplays, oh. though, I read that your next cosplay is going to be Kitty Pride. I have that costume. 
It's sitting in my closet. <laughs> oh, so it's already okay. It's ready to go, and it just doesn't have. A I think I just setting yet. I think I need gloves, and maybe not gloves, but I definitely need shoes. Um, that's kind of the only thing that it truly needs is the shoes. Um, but yeah, she's just chilling in my closet. I haven't really, <laughs> I haven't really touched her in a while. I just, yeah, it. I wasn't able to, there was a meetup of uh, X-Men cosplayers, and that's why I had it, and I wasn't able to go. My uh, manager at the time uh, scheduled me wrong, and I couldn't get out of it, so I had to go to work. Um, but I haven't brought her out since. I really, sh I forgot about her. I should bring her back out and try to finish it. <laughs> I also read on Facebook, this is the newest post on your Facebook uh, as we are recording, that you want to do Cassandra from Tangled, Tinkerbell, and Anastasia Tremaine. I have Anastasia Tremaine's base dress basically done. Um, I just don't have anything else <laughs> for, <laughs> uh, uh, for Tinkerbell. <laughs> she is basically done. I made a dress. I have an apron for her. Um, uh, and since I'm at home, I'm, yeah. I don't plan on doing shoes, so it's fine. The only thing is I had a wig I wanted to use for her, and I just can't make it work. So I just got to get a wig for her. Other than that, she's fine. Um, and then I was going to order a pair of wings for her. Um, Cassandra, I have nothing but the wig. Everything is... Everything is sitting... I found this amazing <laughs> website. They sell... If you're, if you're waiting... If you're waiting yeah. a couple more weeks, your hair should be long enough. I know. I know. It's so yeah. long. It's, going, it's not, even, not even growing out nicely. It's like a weird mullet, but not. It's just awful. I hate it. Um, I just want to shave it off, but I'm not. Leah knows, Leah knows the struggle because uh, once yeah. she was um, comfortable enough to visit me, just like mm -hmm. just me, because I'm a hairdresser by mm -hmm. profession, she was like, please cut my hair. I have to come see you. And you need to cut my hair. It's too yeah. long in the back and my ears are covered and I can't I stand oh, it. Yeah, I looked like a weird kid from Stranger Things or so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But um, for Cassandra, I have, read, I have found a website um, that's amazing. I don't, I can't remember. It's like medievalcollectibles.com, I think it's called. But I have, I have every single piece for... Cassandra sitting in my cart. I just haven't bought anything yet because it's my unemployment hasn't gone through, and so I'm just like I got to be responsible. I have to be an adult. So I just got to save up for rent and bills. But I have mm. every single piece chosen for that costume. But so far, Tinkerbell's the only one that seems to be kind of ready to be shot. Well, maybe you can use your new blonde wig. Yes. I haven't tried making a bun out of that. We um, all just kind of paused our cosplay plans yeah. uh, as well a little, actually because of money, but also because of the conventions. And, well, if you don't have uh, the camera equipment yourself, just like I do, um, I can't mm -hmm. really shoot by myself. That So that's, that's just much... That's just uh, the the motiv I'm just not as motivated to do it because there's yeah, no yeah, one yeah. going to see it, you know. But you have me. <laughs> but then again, now I that I Leah has allowed to meet <laughs> up, she can shoot me. <laughs> so um, the other thing that I wanted to ask you about, we already talked about, like. Um, the anxiety you talked about being uh, fe not feeling as confident about the mm -hmm. uh, bodysuit of Harley in the beginning, but you do um, advertise body positivity, and um, I think I think I might have spotted that you matured in a way into more confidence. Is there anything that you? would want to tell people who don't feel as comfortable with any of their costumes or with their body in general as like maybe a tip or or some advice well one of 
the things that I've noticed from a technical standpoint of people wearing costumes that either they bought or they've made based on regular articles of clothing that they wear is that a lot of costumes on people, whether they're thin, medium-sized, or larger, it doesn't matter. The costume needs to fit to your body. And there's so many people out there who wear costumes that are too tight or too big, too long. Um, they just they don't fit the person's body. And sometimes if you wear something that's too big for you, you look smaller, your proportions don't look right. If you wear something that's too tight, it actually makes you look bigger than you are. And I think it's all finding it's all about finding that right balance. So a lot of my best fitting costumes, I have a seamstress um, who makes them to perfection to my body. She makes it fit me beautifully compared to a... So, okay, here's an example. I ordered someone to make me a Star Trek dress for my Harley Quinn costume. And she had originally said that she'd make it out of the... Star Trek uniform material that she had that's a replica of the original and I was super excited I get it and it turns out she made it out of this weird spandex I was kind of shiny and I put it on and even though it was spandex it did not fit right it looked awful it didn't it didn't fit in the bust area correctly it kind of puffered a puckered up weird in my waist it just didn't fit even though spandex is supposed to be a form fitting material it wasn't sewn for me it was kind of just a general thing whereas my friend who's a seamstress made me the same uniform out of velour a non-stretch fabric and it is literally i'm not even kidding literally the best fitting piece of clothing i have in my closet and it fits me perfect. And I just want people to not be embarrassed by their, by their bodies or try to hide anything. You need to work with what you have. And that's going to give you confidence. If you put on a costume that fits you perfectly, regardless of what your body shape is or your weight, people are going to notice that you're confident wearing it. And they're going to respond positively versus a costume that doesn't fit well it just makes you look funny to be you know to be honest it just doesn't work uh, you're talking about uh, your friend who is a seamstress is uh, she helping you with a lot of costumes or are you doing a lot of stuff yourself um i can't i don't have a sewing machine and i can't really sew i do hand stuff by myself a lot but if i want like a full blown costume i either um thrift it or like I buy it on buy uh buy thrift clothes or I go online and I buy pieces that are authentic costume pieces. I don't buy anything that's made out of like cheap materials. I don't think it reads very well. You can tell they're thin. So I try to find the best like the Halloween kind of mm -mm, uh, yes, it's Halloween kind of costume. I don't do that. I try to find things that yeah, it might be expensive, but in the long run it will last me longer. And it'll look better on camera. And so I have my seamstress. So, so she made my Star Trek costume, which is perfect. My nurse costume, which is perfect. Um, and she helped sew my um, Savage Harley costume, which is spandex. But because she knows the material and she knows my body, she made it to fit me beautifully. It's She's it, having someone know your measurements, know your body, and willing to put in the effort to make it fit you is astonishing. The difference it makes in the quality of your costumes is amazing. It, it really is amazing. I mean, uh, we can see in each and every one of your pictures that the costumes just fit perfectly. And I think that's that's something that also speaks to not only the quality of the picture, but also how you feel mm -hmm. in the costume. Yes. Like, I don't feel good. Well, I was wearing a, my Snow White. I have, like, a, a Snow White costume that I have. And she has pants. I wanted to do, like, a, like a hunter take on her. 
like a woodsman. Yeah, and it looks so good. <laughs> Thank you. But <laughs> such a when, fan. <laughs> when I was wearing the pants, I felt like they were too tight and I was very uncomfortable. I felt like I couldn't have the range of motion I wanted. And mm. I feel like that goes for anyone else who wears a costume that's just too tight. You just, things don't move as well. Like, um, I also, I, I also think that besides having the confidence and, you know, wearing something gives people the impression that you feel good and it's positive. And so people respond very well to that. It's also my biggest thing is not only should a costume fit your body type to the best that it can, but you also need to remember what you're wearing underneath the costume. Um, so, mm. like, I know, you know, people will just throw on underwear, and they call it a day, which is fine, depending on the costume. But when I first, <laughs> when I, the very yeah. first day I wore Harley, I wore the suit, and I had a pair of Spanx underneath it. And the mistake I made was wearing underwear underneath the Spanx, because it did oh, not yeah. smooth me <laughs> out. You could see there's, I have a bunch of photos on Facebook. Um, where, like, I'm moving around and everything, but because I'm wearing a bikini bottom, you can see where my skin is being bunched or, my, you know, my fat is being, you know, squeezed together because I'm having all of these mm. different weird fabric lines on my body versus now I just wear Spanx and you can't even tell. Like, I, you, there's, I'm not wearing regular underneath. I mean, there's, like... um there's underwear sewn into the Spanx, but because it's done seamlessly, mm. it gives you a seamless look. And so when I move around, there's no weird bunching. There's no lines. No lines and no bunching. No and that's squeezing. the other thing is pe when people wear spandex suits is like you have to think about what you're wearing. Under we all go on about how men need to wear is it dance belts. And, you know, to, you know, to make things not look so obvious. And I think the thing needs to go for women is like, you don't have to wear a thong or a bikini bottom underneath there. You could go get Spanx. And my, my Spanx go from my knees to my waist. Which is, so I am completely, I am completely seamless down the sides. You can't even tell. And I think that it's, it's all about making sure you know how the end result's going to look, <laughs> yeah. how you want it to look, and understanding that if you have a certain material or you're wearing something underneath your costume, it mm. might do something to then affect the overall look of the outfit. I also really um, kind of like the feeling of the spandex, to be honest. People seem to find it uncomfortable, but I really like the... the um, Knowing that everything's where it yes. should be, you know, and that you cannot see lines. I, I really like this comfort. It gives me that there's nothing to be seen and everything it's nice, looks it's the It's like way a I nice little it. hug. Yeah. It's nice. And it's so yes. it's yeah. satisfying <laughs> when you take it off because you're like, oh, I'm going to have a beer now. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can totally relate to that because, mm. like, my... <laughs> My um, my proportions are okay, but my belly is quite big, so the spandex mm -hmm. also tucks that in. And when I let that out, it feels like it's twice the size <laughs> it was before. Yeah, I get that. I get that too. Just because it's allowed the yeah. space. <laughs> so um, is there still something that you don't really feel comfortable with? Because, I mean, you show pictures of the gifted clothes you got and... Um, you have uh, the nurse costume is quite short or anything, but is there anything that you'd say that's just not your thing to do? It's it's funny. It's kind of like um, that thing of I can post whatever I want online and I feel confident in it, but if I have to go out in the world mm -hmm. and wear something, yeah, it that's freaks different. me out. <laughs> and so, like, I had um, yeah. a... Oh, what was it? Elastigirl costume, which I have since sold. Um, but I wore her for a shoot. And I, the more I was wearing her, the more I was like, I don't think I could ever wear this outside. It's, it's, it's not mm. different from Harley, but it kind of is. I don't know. It just, it's weird because like 
yeah, Harley, you can, I'm a, it's a full-blown suit, you see my body, I'm not hiding anything in there, but with Elastigirl, because it was um, a, like a, a leotard, I was like, oh, my ass is going to fall out, mm. I don't yeah, like has, this, this is yeah. weird, even though I'm wearing Spanx and tights, it's still uncomfortable, and the images I posted of the gifted stuff are, like, I have hundreds of photos and i choose the very best ones and i make sure i choose the ones that i'm most comfortable with um i think that also i think that is one difference uh, between the confidence going outside and the confidence posting something because you can control what you're posting and you cannot always control how you're standing how you're looking uh, how your angle is in real exactly life like um my Savage Harley, it kind of goes up, re- it shows off my legs and it goes really high up onto my hips. And um, that's the only thing that's kind of revealing. Other than that, my chest is covered. But I was super nervous going mm-hmm. out to New York Comic Con wearing that. And it got a really good reception. And sadly, wearing that costume, that's when I first got my, like, harassment. Like, someone groped me. And it really, it really affected me where I then went to a booth that Tony was talking at that he, he worked for for a little time when he was doing um, the Comic Bento videos. And I just, I just sat in the booth. I just, I couldn't. And then I had, like, I, I left. I had to go home. I was just so upset. I, I no longer felt mm. confident in that costume. And in my own skin. And so when I left and I started walking home. I got harassed more by people on the street wearing it. Um, luckily, obviously, Tony defended me, and um, we had a few strangers defend me, and they were very kind about it. But it was just, I had never experienced that before because I never wore something. Yeah. That is a really, it's a really horrible experience. I'm really sorry to hear that. Um, I am especially sorry because you are not the only or the first one Mm -hmm. that we heard this from these kind of Mm. things it's a really sad environment sometimes for women in the community um because like i'd love to wear that costume again yeah but i don't know it might be one that because at new york comic con i did not have a booth it was just me walking around it might be a, con- a a costume that I only wear if I have a booth um, for my own safety. Yeah, a booth or like stage or like stage appearance yeah, or something I, like that. I just I just don't know. But like again, I felt super confident in my house wearing it, and then as soon as I went into the real world and something happened, I I crumbled and I couldn't control it. Mm. So I try my best to try and be positive online. And show off my confidence, but I also like to, you know, tell people like, yeah, you might be super confident one day and be posting photos of yourself in underwear, but who knows the next day you might just be a complete mess and you just wear sweatpants and a sweatshirt and you want to hide from the world because you just feel gross. (laughs) It's, it's just this horrible roller coaster Mm. of, I don't, you know, I don't post every day and I don't post full body images all the time, but when I do, it's, it's a good day for me. And so I try to, yeah, Yeah. I don't know. Celebrate it. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. (laughs) Celebrate yourself. Yes, I I can totally understand because um, body image is something I think not only women, but a lot of men as well are struggling with. And especially in cosplay, where someone tries to be someone else or look like someone else. Mm. I think it's something... Because you always compare yourself, not just to other real people, but also to Mm. fictional people and characters who maybe are only drawn or animated and do not need to adhere to realistic proportions. Like no one looks like that. No one looks like Jasmine. No one one looks like that. Yeah, that's right. (laughs) No one looks like that. Or Jessica Rabbit. Oh, yeah. Unless Unless they had help. When Heidi Klum did, the, did oh that God. Halloween costume, it, it was so, so scary, scary. But like, good on it her. Was so weird. <laughs> I mean, like the craftsmanship is amazing, but it was a little yeah. scary. Yes, because it was like the real proportions from the character, from the yeah. drawn character, 
on a real body just looks scary. Mm. <laughs> it's just weird. That's all exactly the same when they do the um, these these images where they try to make Barbie look normal or oh, a normal yeah. girl oh, yes, look yes, like yes. a Barbie. It it always yes. looks freaky. It's not right. So <clears throat> I'm really glad that you're talking with us so openly about this these experiences because um, in the beginning of the year we had a live show where we did um, a, a special panel of women in the mm -hmm. nerd culture like just in general it was not cosplay specific but since we are we all of us who were on stage are cosplayers we talked about that a lot as well and i think it's a real problem that especially what you just told us about the groping that in in this environment of conventions and when we are dressed up as someone else that people do not see the person behind the costume exactly. anymore. So they just think they're grabbing Harley's ass, but not Alyssa's. And I think that's might be a part yeah. of the problem. Yeah, I I agree. They they just get too wrapped up in the fantasy of it all. And they just forget, like, there's a person under there, and that person, you know, you don't know if or how they are, how they're going to react. Like, I mean, you always think that when something like that happens to you that you're going to be able to defend yourself. And I just froze. I just fucking froze. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yes. I, th I think that's pretty... Sorry. <laughs> you can swear with us. I, no problem. Yeah, I just... I just We I don't just, have to I be PG. I just froze. And I had friends who were taking the, um, the photo for the person and they didn't know how to react. Like, we all just froze kind of let it happen and i inched away and i tried pushing him away and it didn't work and um i was finally was very loud about how okay we're done you know i kind of yelled it um so more people turned towards mm. me but yeah, i i i always thought that i would be that kind of girl to sound the alarm be very loud smack yeah, that guy him, in the something, face and i yeah. i just froze It was it was a crazy surreal experience yeah, because you feel so helpless in that situation. We had that at a convention where Leah was dressed at, as the mm -hmm. Suicide Squad Harley, and yeah. someone wanted to take pictures, and that's fine. And then he goes, "Can I take one Ew. from your behind?" Oh, we like, so gross. yes. Because uh, uh, uh. I also think of the fear of not knowing what that person's like. If like he was. Um, basically had his head on my chest and his arms around my waist and then one hand creeped up underneath the dress but the the fear of it Ugh. is i am Ugh. i am Ugh. completely being held by a person and if i do something how how strong are they how are they going to react are they then going yeah. to attack me or what are they good i i have no idea mm. so you just you know stand there hoping it'll be done and it was it was yeah It was awful. Mm. So I'm hoping if it ever, I don't think it'll ever happen again. But if it does happen again to me, I, knowing that I had been through that experience before and how I reacted, I don't think I'll be as scared now to, you know, be vocal about it or push him punch away. Punch someone. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's, it's. Just punch him in the face. <laughs> and it's really good that you have. That you had yeah. people around you who you can trust and that you also had the booth yeah. that you can go to and get home safely and stuff like yeah. that. It's really important to have yeah. a network in situations like that so that you don't feel alone. But one always yeah. feels like one should do more. Like, I feel like... Even when I see that happen to someone else, I'm sometimes not brave enough to like speak up, even though I want to. And I feel like it, it's the right thing to yeah. do, but it's just so scary. I don't think I've you don't know been what will happen. around my friends who've had anything physical happen to them, but I've had people who um, are clearly taking inappropriate photos, and then I just, I just go stand oh, yeah. in front of it. I'm like, no, I'm going to stand in front of your camera. I'm going to stand in front of my friend yeah. or I'm going to move my friend. I'm not just. Yeah, that's good. I, I hate that. I think that is so gross. I don't, I don't understand what the point of it is. Yeah. Like, what you, just stop. Go home and Google it. There's women out there who make their mm -hmm. living doing this. Go support them. Don't be a creep. Yes. <laughs> oh, God. Yes. Yeah, like, right, like right. there's 
people who have this is their job and you should go support those people you know pay their rent yeah don't Absolutely go to a convention right. and prey on ch- people. You don't know how old they are. Oh, yeah. That's another... You don't know yeah. who they are. That's oh, yeah. the other thing. is like, oh, you yeah. don't know that from behind. Yeah. Ooh, hot. But they turn around and they got braces on and, you know, acne. You don't know if they're 12 years old. That's gross. And mm. criminal offense. <laughs> exactly. And I it's just... Ugh. Ugh. No. I hate. Yeah. Yeah, right. Germany just passed a law to make upskirting, like taking things oh. from be- uh, behind, make that illegal. And a lot of people who were uh, interviewed after that decision went viral here um, were like, I don't Ew. even know. It's like a victimless crime, yeah. isn't it? Gross. And yeah, it really rubs me the wrong way as well. And I think... It's really a systemic problem we face as women in this There world. is a victim. The victim is the person that you're taking a photo of. And people, I, I don't know, because it's not just men, but it seems to be the majority of people who are doing that kind of things are men. Yeah, right. But I just wonder if it's that thing of just that, that drive, that, that, just, that, that sex drive. And they don't understand that mm. as men, they're the ones who are penetrating. They're kind of putting the dominant power over someone. Whereas a woman takes something into their body, it's very, it can be very invasive. It's very scary sometimes. And they mm, just don't understand how women experience that kind of thing, how their brain works how they're emotionally going through a situation like that when so when something sexual happens to them that is unwanted unwarranted it really screws you yeah. up it is it's just yeah it's not fun i think though not to be not to be like too over the top here but i think that lots of men actually do understand it because if you ever like touch their butt wrong or something they yes. really do know what consent and ongoing consent yes. is <laughs> because let, let's face it because if we do something that they do not consent to they know how to stop like or how to say please stop i don't want this but a lot of women um just fear I th- yeah, the reaction a man a man can handle a woman who's smaller something. than him and say no where a woman, yeah. I, I'm, right. if a six foot man comes up to me, because I'm five one, six foot man comes up to me and starts doing something to me, I, I could say no, but like, you know, who knows what will happen after that. It's just scary. Yeah, right. Exactly. Where we kind of have to like smile and wave. Yeah, he can just like throw you over his shoulder and drag you away. Exactly. And people standing around would probably think that you know each other and that it's all a game. And and this is why you just freeze. I mean, I got the situation like a lot of times wearing my Suicide uh, Squad Harley or wearing Captain Hmm. Marvel, especially Captain Marvel. That's so weird. Uh, Guys come up to me and say like, oh, yeah, can I take a picture of your ass? (laughs) Or something like this. It's, It's not the like the real wording <laughs> but i'm just just frozen right there yeah so i can feel that it's yeah. the fight or flight reaction. it's so forward of people i don't understand like why would it be okay why would mm. you ever have why would you yeah. ever have that come across your mind <laughs> no. like i'm gonna <laughs> go up i would never have the balls to ask i'm gonna go that. up to this like, person I would who wore a costume ever not go on to halloween someone and ask to take a photo them, of their hey. butt that's a great idea it's it's like the best idea i've ever yeah. had <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah and they say it with exactly that confidence <laughs> like like yeah, they know right. like they already know that we're gonna say yes and it's like but we're not so yeah <laughs> don't act surprised oh you don't want me to no i don't leave me alone i wasn't expecting that <laughs> i'm i'm really i i have to say i am uh overwhelmed with joy that we have a little section in this talk because it's like yeah right (laughs) (laughs) it's one of my things and nobody ever wants me to talk about it but (laughs) oh i'll i'll talk about it all day yes i i mean um all of the 
podcasts that we do are individual and we never know what direction it's going to take. We, of course, we searched your Facebook, your Instagram and stuff and we uh, and your, we looked at your Patreon and we, we looked what you're doing. And yes, I have in my notes here that I want to talk with you about body positivity and about um, your time off right now and how you're handling this stuff. But I would have never guessed that we would be talking about like consent and upskirting and stuff like that. And I'm really glad we did because um, I feel it's a topic that should be discussed more often because it happens exactly. a lot and people should know that they are not alone. And it's not only in the USA, it's also in Germany. <laughs> so <laughs> I do have to say, though, I did say, though, concept. being when I, the three times I've been to Germany, I've never had a problem at the convention and people are extremely nice and people always ask to mm. can i put my hand on your shoulder could i put your hand on my hand on your waist they always ask before they touched me that's that's nice where that's so good. sometimes you're you know in america yeah. and even if you have a booth people can be very demanding and very forward without asking like suddenly you're in the air and they pick you up and you're like ah i wasn't don't do that i'm not ready for that but yeah, the customer is king. Yes, German, Germany was always great when I went there. We are, we're trying to drill the people to be polite, especially on conventions. I, You probably have not seen this, but uh, on stage uh, between, the, between the interviews, they sometimes um, put up some kind of etiquette oh, rules. Oh, that's nice. Something like, um, do not ask the stars on stage to give you a hug. <laughs> stuff like that and and um they also like when you buy your ticket to get a uh, photograph with someone they will tell you like this mm -hmm. person does not like to be touched or it's okay if you can um, uh, to put your arm around them stuff like that so we really try really hard to make our guest as comfortable as possible and i think it is the right approach because a lot of people especially those who are coming to a convention exactly. for the first time they just don't know how to behave they don't know that this is exactly. not a free for all fantasy world that they have maybe imagined from mm. from tv yeah or something. this is the thing this is exactly the thing because in germany we have like uh, comic cons only until like five or six years now Oh. It's a really fresh thing for us here in Germany, the, the big comic cons. We just had like this hotel convention. They're still making fun of us yeah. on TV. <laughs> so it's really new. And I think uh, you have to tell your guests uh, that you don't are allowed to touch the stars, that you have to be nice to the cosplayers. And so, so uh, like this etiquette thing was really yeah. new for everyone, but everyone was really um, fast invested in it. I mean, also, and it was the, the organization of the convention, like, because, um, so Alex was the person who brought me and Tony in, and she'd always come over and ask if we were okay, if we needed water, if we needed food, but it wasn't just her. Oh, Alex, Alex I love her. <laughs> she, she's the real MVP. But, like, it was also the fact that you've had so many people um, dedicated to walking the floor just to check on everything, check on people. Um, cause it wasn't just her walking up to us. It was a, it was just a bunch of different people coming up and the team that they had walking the floor was fantastic where I don't really see that at American conventions. Yeah. I'll have, um, I'll see someone walk by and they have volunteers or they have people who work at the convention that can help you, but I don't see them nearly as often as I saw the people there. Um, I didn't get the attention, not that I need it, but like, you know, having them just walk up with already bottles of water in their hand and a straw, you know, kind of anticipating the need for water or, you know, coming up and giving me a pretzel, like the need for, they're anticipating that I might be hungry or, you know, they already know like, hey, if you need food, you go to this room. If you need something to take you, we can take you. Whereas um, I've been to several conventions in America where, Yes, they have done that, and it's fantastic, but a lot of them, they're like, oh, well, you know, you can buy your food at the concession stand, or, oh, you can go over there and get that, and it's like, okay, but I can't leave my booth, and so I ask them to watch my booth, and I leave, I come back, and no one's there, 
I don't know where they went. My stuff is just sitting out there, and that's stuff I've paid for and I'm trying to sell. Or the fact, like, I have told them before, like, I I have a contract that is kind of loose. Like, I don't ask for an appearance fee, really, um, unless they offer it. Um, I just ask them to pay for travel and expenses, so, like, the hotel and stuff. Um, but I do also ask, can you please give me a per diem for the day to buy food if I need it or provide lunch? And they it's usually never met no one ever follows that and i either i don't eat lunch um because i can't leave my booth and i can't find anyone to watch it or by the time i get food it's all meat based even though i've already told them several times that i am a vegetarian and so sometimes the the level of attention on a basic level isn't met whereas when i was in germany it was just like it was overwhelming how kind and helpful everyone was regardless of what it was like i think i asked for i think something came apart in my costume and i asked for double-sided tape and they're like we got you and boom double-sided tape like yeah yeah i think i think the, the especially at uh, comic-con germany the volunteers there they most of them are long time convention nerds and they have been through smaller hotel-based conventions and now they've been with the big uh mess hall uh massive conventions from the beginning and they're just really into it and they really want the, the it feels very safety and the the closeness from yeah. the smaller conventions to also shine through in the big ones yes yes that's really nice to hear so if we would ask them to invite you back you would come maybe if if if, if, if you're I'm allowed, allowed to, to travel go across the ocean, <laughs> yes. <laughs> next year, next year. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully you come back so we can invite you for a coffee or something. Yes. So thanks for Yes, being and here. then we also <laughs> drag you on stage because the, the didn't work yes. last summer. Yes, we'll definitely make t we'll make time for that. <laughs> Amazing. So um, we already hit the one hour mark in our podcast. <laughs> so um, Oh, yeah. But it was so exciting, everything. Yes, it always it's flies. So nice. Time flies when you're talking <laughs> yeah. with nice people. But we do need to wrap it up. So mm -hmm. is there anything that you would tell, want to tell uh, the people listening, either in Germany or around the world? Because our English um, podcast sometimes reaches across the waters as well. Um what you what you want them to hear from you or what you're doing at the moment what you're doing next what you're planning um your channels anything this is your stage just um well you can find me on instagram um my handle on there is Alyssa r king a l y s s a r k i n g um but if you just type in We will also spell that out uh, in our uh, in the description of the episode. Okay. But you can also can just search Joker's Harley, and I, I should pop up. I try to tag every photo with that, um, so I'm easy to find. Facebook is Joker's Harley cosplay because someone already took Joker's Harley, and <laughs> um, Patreon also Joker's Harley. Um, That's the big ones, but right now I'm kind of just home trying to work on my own personal projects, doing what I want to do, um, you know. Drawing a lot. Drawing a lot, because that's what I went to college for, and that's what I love doing. Um, so I'm just trying to focus on things that make me happy right now, and even though sometimes I'm worried that I'm not putting out content, I'm not putting out as much as others that I have seen who continue to just push through. Um, it's okay to take this time for yourself because it's hard. It's taxing on your emotions. And so just sitting at home and reading or watching TV or baking is just as fine compared to people who are making 12 costumes a week and somehow shooting them all. Like, I just don't understand. Um, but well, good for yeah, them. I, I, I agree. <laughs> you, do not, you do not have to be productive in a global pandemic, really. No. You need to take Just care of your health. Safe. Don't be stressed out. Stay calm. Try and breathe. Drink some water. Don't skip meals. Um, but as far as 
you know, when this finally opens up for the people who go to conventions who are scared and uh, have never been to conventions, want to go for the first time, or have received negative comments from people when they have gone, is just, I got them too. The first time I cosplayed and put them online, people said a lot of mean things to me and I spent way too long crying about it. It's not worth the tears because those people are online. You can easily ignore them. You can easily delete the comments if you want to keep them on there and look at them as, you know, um, ways to troll encourage trolls. yourself. To just, Yeah, exactly. Like, you know what? They said this about me and I'm going to go prove them wrong because I'm going to be a badass human being and wear that costume. Like, just walk out on that floor and it's... It's not a fashion show. It's not a contest. It's about to. Ha it's it's fun. It's cosplay. Put the costume on and walk around and enjoy yourself. That's all I have to say about that. Like it's not. It, it shouldn't be a competition. It's not a competition in my eyes. So, you know, be your best. You don't have to be the best character. You don't have to be the best seamstress or a crafter or in in this fandom. Exactly. Just be the best you can be. And if that makes you happy and that makes you feel good about yourself, then that's all that matters. That's so amazing. Very emotional, motivating word, words. I really like that as an ending. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing your time with us. Thank you very uh, much. Yeah. I feel so much better right now. <laughs> yes, I do too. It feels really good. Good. And um, yes, we will, uh, of course, uh, um, hit you up with uh, the release date. It will be sometime because we already recorded something else for this month. But mm -hmm. I'm really, really glad that you were with us. Um, and Yeah, thank you so much for taking your time. Of course, thank yes. you. Thank you so much. And uh, stay safe, stay healthy. And okay, you too. Lots of fun drawing. <laughs> I will. <laughs> so, vielen Dank an Jokers Harley, uh, a.k.a. Alyssa King. Uh, ich hoffe, ihr hattet Spaß beim Zuhören. Konntet uns gut verstehen. Wenn es natürlich Fragen gibt, schreibt was in die Kommentare. Wir beantworten gerne alles. Oder ihr folgt ihr auf Instagram, Facebook, habt ihr gerade gehört. Sie hat auch einen Patreon, wo ihr sie unterstützen könnt, wo sie viele ihrer Zeichnungen veröffentlicht. Und äh, außerdem könnt ihr äh, ihr auch helfen, indem ihr Submissions abgebt und ihre Zeichnungen für euch persönlich kauft. Und wenn es sonst noch irgendwas äh, gibt, das ihr euch wünscht von uns für die Zukunft oder Gäste, dürft ihr das auch gerne in den Kommentaren hinterlassen. Vielen Dank fürs Zuhören und bis zum nächsten Mal. Tschüss!